What's up, Internet? It is the second day of Bomber Week. Just yesterday, we finished the first planet of Bomberman Hero, which is Planet Bomber. Now we're going on to Planet 2, Planet Primus. So let's get to it. Um, so yeah, just recording this the next day over, as I'm going to be doing with each of them. So not a ton has changed since then. But uh, we have some continuation of the... Star Wars-esque story. And I believe I actually alluded to this level a little bit in the last video, which was that there's a level with um, seasons that change, and you have to sort of swap the seasons to progress. I believe that's the next level, and that's a really cool level. I kind of wish they used the, the um, concept a little bit more, but it's only shown in this one level. And they do that a couple times where they'll completely introduce new mechanics and only ever use it once. And it's a little bit sad that they did that, but uh, yeah. So fighting little tiny bull things running around the foresty areas. Uh, giant evil plants of death. And they do end up looking very scary, if I recall correctly. But, um... The boss to this... This, uh, planet's a little bit interesting. Because... It, uh, plays differently than other bosses, because you're not on foot for this fight. You're actually going to be using one of your bomber gear. And, if I recall, you actually have to... Uh, you can sort of cheese your way to the exit there, but we'll... We'll not do that. Uh, how do I do this again? Attack with a freezing bomb. Oh. Oh, that's right, I have to get the special bomb types. Okay. That's right. This game has more than one bomb type, which was very different than the original Bomberman game on the N64, and more similar to Second Attack, which had like seven different bomb types. But this one only has three. It's got, uh, it's got, uh, the regular fire bombs. And let's see if I can make it. Nope, but I can, uh, scoot in there anyway. And that's how you completely cheese that level. Unfortunately, I had to murder my thumb with my crappy control stick, but that's life. Okay, this level has, um, this level has, if I recall, uh, Super Mario 64-esque hidden teleporter pads, which you need to, uh, use if you want to get, uh, the collectible bomb in this level. And I think it's at the bottom of one of these. Oh, maybe it was just that. If I recall, these little, uh, squishy things divide into others, and they all have, like, a different personality to them, which is kind of cool. Which reminds me of those little rainbow guys from, um... Kirby, uh, Kirby 3, as well as the little jelly dudes from Mischief Makers. They all had different sort of personalities and colors and stuff, and that was super cool. Teleport aim. Hell, that's exactly what I needed. There's the bomb. Ah, I can't make it there with my crappy control stick. And my hand hurts. <laughs> uh, so what else has been going on since yesterday? Um... I worked on trying to degrout a tile floor, which basically means you take a screwdriver and you try and uh, scrape out all the the uh, mold crap in between the tiles and stuff. And that's of course a type of like condensed porcelain or whatever, which I'm learning after the fact. Like I don't do a lot of um, home renovation stuff or anything. I'm just doing this because. I'm unemployed, so people think I'm not doing anything with my spare time, or think that I even have spare time. I don't, but, uh, I, I wish they'd know that, but, uh, that's the stigma I carry with myself, I guess. And, uh, Bar Marine level. Anyway, I was degrouting tile, and, uh, somehow, despite wearing shoes and, uh, socks, somehow a small, like, uh, sliver of grout residue got into my, like, Foot and like just I basically spent like an hour trying to like surgically remove porcelain from my foot that was that wasn't fun I like this level it's um it's very biological looking which 
It's a, it's a nice sort of continuation from the last level, which also felt kind of biological in nature. And there's actually a few really cool uh, bomber marine levels, like... I really slag off these levels because I don't think they're interesting, but there are some really cool themes, like, um... I think the next one, actually, is really cool, because it's... It's kind of like half a boss battle that you can skip a little bit. Aw, oh, crap. I'm also very awful at these missions, and it doesn't help that my controls are less than ideal. But, uh, we'll see what we can do about getting through here. I mean, I guess it's slightly better than the jetpack levels, because I can at least go backwards if I need to, but it's still not very good. I like these Parodius, like, uh, Easter Island heads. Like, I, I have no idea why they're here, but they're kind of cool and random. And giant rows of teeth, which is kind of an allusion to a later level. That has nothing to do with this level at all, but uh, that's going to be fun. I'm a little bit worried about uh, one level, just for uh, audio blowout. Uh, oh, crap. I remember this. Okay, each of these... Uh, these uh, holes that you see teleport you, and I don't remember where I need to go, so this is going to be fun. Uh, well, that could have gone worse, I suppose. I think it's on the right side the way through? Yep, I think so. But, uh, I like these levels a little bit. Like I, I functionally hate them, but... They all seem to have a different theme around them, like, the first one had sort of a lost city of Atlantis, this one's got sort of a inside a giant monster stomach sort of feel, and, uh, there's one which I think is on the next planet, which is really cool, and it's one of the few levels that feels like it's a direct continuation of the previous level, so, that's kind of cool, because that's one thing about these levels, they all feel kind of disconnected. There's very few that feel like they're directly connected to the previous one. But, uh, this one feels a little bit connected. And, uh, there's another one like this that's, that actually has a bit of an intro from the previous level, which is kind of neat. Uh, oh, there's a secret route, we gotta go find it. I think it's through here again. Probably just gonna have to take a different teleport route. Uh, I guess we're going left now. Uh, anyway, uh, what else has been going on? Uh, playing Smash Bros. a little bit. Really, I'm just uh, training up my amiibo because I'm I'm dead set on making my little Samus figurine into an SNK grade boss. And I think with the equipment, there's a lot of potential to do that. Like, I, I found two pieces of equipment that I like to use in combination. One is, like, uh, all her damage output heals her. <laughs> and the other is if she guards and you hit her, uh, she does, like, 50 damage to you directly and uh, you explode. <laughs> still not sure what I should use for my third ability. I've heard critical hit is a good one, but I still haven't found a piece of equipment with that. Uh, but really all I'm doing is playing with my amiibo, because I think that it's kind of fun to see what this AI can do. And now we're in a completely different area with those stupid bubble things. And I'm going to run into one, because why not? Uh, it's kind of interesting that each planet has its own sort of theme to it, or at least the first section kind of does. Like, Bomber World is sort of like the classic... Oh, crap. That's not good. We gotta go back and get uh, a wall through item that's somewhere around here. And probably die because I can't see where I'm going. Uh, that might have been it. Yep, that's... I think that's it. Oh, and I'm dead. Oh, well, I'll just have to go grab it in the next run. Uh, no checkpoints either, that kind of sucks. Um... So yeah, I'm playing with my amiibo a little bit. Um, the Deluxe Digital promotion on the Wii U is expiring soon. It ends on December 31st, which I think I've 
gotten maybe $10 rebate from it in its entirety. Five of which I got with the system because I got like a downloadable copy of um, Nintendo Land, which that was okay, I guess, but I, I don't know. I guess that shows how much I've used my Wii U. It's like I've got a total of maybe $100 purchased digitally on it. And that's about it. Most of it's, in fact, all of it's just virtual console stuff. Oh, crap, I'm on the wrong one. Oh! Uh. Uh, what else is going on? I hear Afterburner Climax is getting, um, removed from the Xbox Live Marketplace. Apparently on New Year's. So that, that's going to be kind of sad. It's going the way of classic... Outrun Online, which I've wanted to get for the longest time. Sad story is, at one point, I guess it was just sort of a dumb thing, one of the uh, people at Microsoft did, but uh, for like an hour, about a year ago, it actually went back on the marketplace. I I'm guessing it was just some sort of colossal mistake or whatever. And I like downloaded the demo, and I was going to purchase it through the demo, and uh, when it was done, the... Uh, is back to no longer being purchasable, so I've got the uh, demo to Outrun online on my Xbox and I can't buy it and I'm sad about that. Because I love Outrun, Outrun's probably my favorite driving game. And we just unlocked the second level. Uh, the theme to this world is kind of jungly, at least the first area is, although it's very close to getting sent to um, sort of a palace fortress theme, and you'll see that sort of evolution. Uh, oh, and there's a nice little trap. And there's a few more in this level, if I recall correctly. Um, the next world steam is a uh, desert, which is fun. Uh, the one after that, I believe, if I'm not uh, confusing bits of the level, is uh, both a lava world and sort of a jungle world. So the next one is the next one is like a desert, and then the one after that's like lava jungle. Ah crap! Oh, this is gonna be really tough to do with my controller because it's just gonna want to push me off. Ah, uh, we super speed jump. Ah, uh, my head hurts. Uh, what do we have over here? Do we have anything cool? Gold gem. Not bad. Jump. Whoa. I like that you can at least control your descent while you do that. Uh, jump up. Ah, oh, stupid traps. I don't like that there's no real conveyance that there's anything there, though. That's kind of nonsense. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Oh. And that would have probably gone a lot better had my controller, you know, worked properly. But uh, let's try that again. And I'll try not to take damage this time if I can help it. Uh. But uh, the boss of this world is one of two where you get to use gear to fight the boss. The other is a remix of another boss that we're going to see later on. And that one's weird because at least every other boss's remake is kind of similar to how you fight them, but that one is completely different with the inclusion of the uh, gear. Oh crap. Nope. Not going to make it. Fortunately, it doesn't kill you instantly, so I can just run through that nonsense. Ugh. And do we finish? Nope, still got water slider. Now we can go to the next area. And I believe the next area actually has a bit of a interlude story bit about you sort of uh, sieging a castle, which is kind of neat. And there's the bomb, the Sega Saturn logo of death, and unlocking things. Uh, jump! This is painful. Uh, my thumb. Can't do it. Uh, let's see if I can just... Yeah! That works too. 
I find ways to make my lack of effective equipment work. Despite things. Uh, crap! Um, so yeah, that's going on. Oh no! I hate these sewers! These sewers suck. They remind me of another game. What is it? Uh, Klonoa, maybe. I think there was a level in Klonoa that was kind of like this, I think. Oh, and I gotta grab it, despite not needing it. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna get it. Oh, well. Jump. No, no, no! <laughs> yeah, being able to control your gameplay is an important part to succeeding in anything. I don't have that working with me, so... I'm not sure if that speaks to skill or ineptitude or something, but, uh... Yeah, my N64 controller's been eaten into the dirt and the control sticks just don't work terribly well. I like the little squishy guys. <laughs> Those guys are fun little one-eyed cyclops jellyfish things. They remind me a little bit of the really small enemy types from the Tales of games, like, uh, where you'd run on... Are you serious? Okay, now I'm getting mad. The game's over. Yeah, yeah, game's over. Go again. I'm now determined to beat this thing and probably chew a hole through my thumb while doing it. You know, I've seen some people hold their N64 controllers really weirdly. Like, I've seen people like, hold both outside prongs of the N64 controller, and then, like, try and reach the control stick with one of their thumbs from the outer side of the controller, and it's just... How do you functionally hold it like that? Like, I understand the N64 controller is designed not great, but... How... How do you figure that's the way you should hold it? Like, that's never made sense to me. I mean, you rarely ever use the left prong on the N64 controller, unless you're playing, like, Mischief Makers. Well, that's a good game, you should play it. Yeah! Against all adversity, I beat this level. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about Smash. I mean... I've, I've been playing it, and after about two days, especially after, like, my Faff and About I recorded, I had unlocked all the characters, and there are only six, and five of them are reskin characters. Like, I, I recall Smash having a lot more hidden characters, and they weren't all clones. What makes this even more frustrating is the fact that there's only about five or so hidden levels. Although I will say this, the, uh, the final hidden character, which I won't uh, spoil, I did not see that coming and I was impressed, but I'm still disappointed at the lack of Klonoa in that game, because it totally needs to be there. It'd be perfect. Or Dig Dug. Or any Tales of character. Uh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, those, those characters need to be in there. Uh, what else? Uh, cutting together a review right now for a 360 game I've got. Um, that's going well, I guess. I think I've got all the audio I'm going to need for it and stuff. Although there's one little extra thing I'm going to need to record for the end, I think. But, uh, that was fun, and I'm glad I got to play it. Um... I don't know, I'm still debating whether or not to do an extra little thing for Bomber Week. Like, I, I kind of have an idea of one thing I could do. But I've never... I'm not sure if I can afford to do it, nor I'm not sure if I have the time to invest in it. If I recall correctly, I really hate this level. Like, when I was a kid, I had to go through this level about eight times, and I did it by, like, the skin of my teeth the one time I did do it. And I managed to, like, cheese a part of the physics to, like, hide on top of a uh, platform you're, you're not supposed to be able to get on, and just bomb stuff below me. If I recall, that's how I did it. Whoa. Oh, don't kill me. Yeah, firepower doesn't increase your damage, just increases, yeah. I 
think this is about the part where I started cheesing it and just started dropping bombs on that stupid rat thing. Yep. And then the, its tail comes off and explodes because it itself is a bomb. <laughs> and that's essentially the short version of how I managed to beat this game the first, or this level the first time I played it. Is I basically cheated. Or used brilliant tactics. Which, whichever one you prefer to think of it as. I prefer to think of it in more positive light, but, uh... Then you can just slide down there. And skip the bomb altogether, and go back and get the other exit, because there's two. And I keep forgetting that. But, uh... We are now in the sort of dungeon sewer area of the princess's castle because it's now been taken over by the bad guys. I'm not sure what continuity this game takes part in. Like, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, the main bad guy is the one from, like, the S Super Nintendo Bomberman games. But it makes no allusion to it at all. And, like, it makes an allusion to the secret final boss that uh, Bomberman's fought him before, but he hasn't. Like, I haven't played any of the Super Nintendo Bomberman games. The first Bomberman game I played was, uh, Bomberman 64, actually, but... But, um... I, I've since gone back and I've looked into stuff, and, uh, the final boss, or the secret final boss of this game, despite being told, uh, Bomberman's fought him before, he hasn't, so... Maybe this was to try and open up a new series for Bomberman. I don't know. But, um, it didn't happen. Which is unfortunate. I'd like to see another Bomberman hero type game. But, unfortunately, Hudson got eaten by Konami. I did it! And they now only kind of sort of exist. Now we go to Million Road and we get the jetpack. And this is kind of neat because we're in the like, uh, Royal Halls using a jetpack indoors, which... I like that. I'm not sure how I feel about shortening the sequence. Like, it's faster, I guess, but I kind of like the sequence. Da-na-na. Da-na. Da-na-da. Da-na-da. Now, if I recall, this is not the one that has the secret collectible bomb that pissed me off forever. So, I don't have to worry about that. But it does have these giant shark things, which look like they were the tanks from Rise of the Black Dogs, which was a really, really terrible, like, uh, Battle Zone sequel that I don't think anyone ever played. I own it. It's not very good. It, it's just really not very good. Also, it's weird because, like, you start out on the easiest mode, like, playing as the Americans is, like, easy mode. And it will actually give you, like, a fully voiced intro to your character, and then your character, no matter what mode you're playing, or whatever, or even end the game, is ever addressed again. Also, I love the sound cues to the fully powered up ball. Like, you know that's just powerful. It's like, Bruce. It's just like... Well, you have to worry about, uh, creating a train of, uh, bombs to yourself. And that's kind of annoying. I like that the princess's face is up there. That's a nice little touch. But, uh, finish the jetpack level. I go to the warp room. And this is... Oh, crap. Those guys are very loud. I think it's these guys. Yeah. Yeah. These guys are incredibly loud. In fact, uh... I'm pretty sure they're prone, prone to blowing out speakers, so watch out for that. I know there's another level that's just filled with these guys, but they fly too, so that's great. And you gotta get, like, the, uh, special phase through to get the bomb. Oh, no, no, no. Bye-bye. <laughs> Didn't blow me up that time. Stupid giant evil pink bomb of death. All these stupid red chocolate chip thingies are gonna kill me. Unless I run from the chocolate chips of doom. I like the cute little barrel guys. <laughs> like, they look like they should just be hanging out with the, uh... The cute, uh... Yellow enemy guys from the training session. Oop. Teleport, 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 teleport. Oh no, invincibility frames. I died because of my invincibility frames. That's... 
I don't think that's ever happened in the history of anything ever. Boom. Boom. Oh, I hate these guys. Stop blaring into my ears. I kind of like that uh, if you die, you lose one level of both your bomb and firepower. So that means, like, you know, if, if you died because of your own uh, overuse of your own abilities, you can uh, sort of scale it back a little bit. That's kind of nice. I'm just going to run away from this. And I got away in time. And I got the wall phase. And you're dead. Jump up. And we'll grab the bomb while we're here. And not touch the giant electric uh, oven top floor over there. Uh, uh, there was another cameo in this game. It was uh, Louie from the Bomberman... Uh, Super Bomberman games. His little bomber mount thingy. He's in here. He shows up for two levels and I think two cutscenes. That's kind of neat. The Dark Prison. I believe there's... Oh, I know this level. This level's really cool. Like, it's just a uh, prison floating in free space, but... Something about the simplistic design of this level I really like. Like, it's very simple. It's just go collect the four things and get out of there. But there's a lot of extra stuff if you want to go look for it. Like, that's a... Uh, that's a, what's the term? Remote detonator for your bombs. Go, whoop, remote detonate, and boom. I can go up there and collect the key. And I just need three more keys. And I'm not sure if that's coming from the bottom of the screen or coming down vertically. And I don't want to test it. So I'm gonna keep going. What is the point of those guys? All they do is go forward and back. I mean, one was guarding the, uh, based the boss of the last world, and it was literally doing that for no apparent reason whatsoever. That was weird. I don't understand the point of these guys. Boom! <laughs> oh, I, uh, I recently, just before I started this recording, in fact, just discovered the Adventure Time, uh, iPhone BMO app, which has been the past half hour of my life. Um, I, that was very close. I've that that app has an insane amount of voice clips to it, and it's free, which is nice. I mean, you can pay if you want, like an extra dollar for two extra games. But considering that it has one game on it already and it's already pretty woeful, I wouldn't bother. But it's got an insane number of voice clips. Like every menu has about three different voice recordings, and there's just a, few, a ton of just like secret voice clips and stuff that. That just shows that someone put a lot of time and effort into that, and I, I really appreciate that. It, it was a cool little thing, and I like it. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> that really hurt my hand. <laughs> but, uh, the only thing I'm sad about is it, of all the voice clips, it does not have an Earl of Lemon Grab uh, voice clips, so I can't have my phone shouting unacceptable to everyone I walk into, which I would totally do. But, uh, my phone now has a use. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know why I have a phone. Oh, it's, uh, Princess locked in her own jail. There's a certain level of irony to that. And we get some nice elevator music as her theme song. She even looks a little bit like Princess Leia a little bit. Crossed with maybe, like, Rosalina or something. I don't understand why everyone likes Rosalina, to be honest, but, uh... Yeah, I've got a, uh... Oh, it's this asshole again. Bomber ninja dude. With the floor piles of death. And the... Super Saiyan slash... Slash elemental knight eye... Thing. That was a really poncy walk cycle. That was... That was special. <laughs> If I recall, you can knock off his uh, visor and his scarf in some of these fights, which is a nice little touch if you're paying attention. Now, as you'll notice, he now has a third one, these little uh, orange things, which, if I recall correctly, fire off beam chakrams, so... And they rebound around the stage, so that's a little trickier. 
Like, yeah, I, I have a phone for absolutely no reason whatsoever. But, uh, I've got an iPhone, I've had it for about half a year now. And the most use it's gotten is, like, out of the past half hour, just me messing around with Adventure Time sound clips. And I think I've probably one of the largest phone generation jumps, like, ever, because my previous phone before this, which also got about as much use as the one I currently have, it had a rotary dial. <laughs> like, I I'm not joking, my last phone did in fact have a rotary dial, and now I've got an iPhone, which I use about as much. Oh, I guess I could surf the internet or something. There we go. Definitely was even easier than the last one. Like, the last one, it felt like it took a lot longer. And then the next one, I think he... He eventually gets, like, floor panels that shoot up flamethrowers, and then I think he gets a shield, and then the last one he uses everything, and... His one weakness... He gets shoved onto his back, and he can't do anything about it. <laughs> In the clock tower, as stolen by the final boss of this, uh, planet. What? But that's on the other side of the castle. We spent all this time going to the dungeon. Now we have to go all the way back to the top. That's the boss this level, by the way. Big stupid bird guy. I like to think he's Falco's cousin. Anyway, uh... Yeah, Killer Gate. Which is... Oh, this is, uh... We get the full intro sequence because we get a new piece of gear. The Bomber Copter. This is the third of four pieces. And this one only gets use in, I believe, three levels and one boss fight. It's kind of a shame, because it at least is functionally different than the than the jet and... Although it doesn't look any different. <laughs> ah, change! But uh, it, it plays functionally different than... <laughs> I like how he's just sort of chilling as he flies forward like that. I like this music too, but uh, this is functionally different than the jet and the uh, and the uh, submarine, which played very similarly. Uh, as you can imagine, it was sort of like a almost rail shooter, although with the submarine you at least had some control of moving forward and back. This one you have to be a little bit more tactical about, and pretty much all the missions with this involve bombing precise targets. Whoa! This thing's also a lot more maneuverable, even with my crappy controls. It seems to be actually really, really pretty responsive, and I like that. But, uh, in order to beat this level, you actually have to destroy all of these things. Which is why I'm not just flying past most of it. Let me grab that. Yes. Uh, so what else? Oh, going back to some things. I'm watching a lot of Adventure Time. Although I do that on a perpetual basis, like, uh, if I'm eating and I'm just needing to, like, take a lunch break or something in front of my computer, I'll, like, um, I'll watch an episode of Adventure Time or something. I like Adventure Time. I, I think it's kind of similar to, uh, Looney Tunes or, like, a Studio Ghibli film in that it's animation, so it's sort of centered around appealing to a audience for kids, but there's enough stuff in it for adults to enjoy it. And I missed the Sega Saturn logo. Got it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So it's kind of like an Animaniacs or something, where it's kind of timeless, but you can enjoy it as an adult or as a kid. I don't think I blew that thing up, but I want to... Crap. I like the uh, unique death animation, though, the sort of slow coptering to the ground. That was a nice touch. Although I don't have these super satisfying explodey bombs anymore. That's kind of sad. Uh, tons of uh, winter sales going on through digital distribution, and yet nothing I want to purchase. Uh, seriously, I I've been looking on PSN for like cheap games that I can maybe do reviews out of later, but there's just nothing. Uh, check that Xbox. The only thing I saw was on last week was like the uh, Pac-Man Museum, which is still way more money than I was going to spend on a collection of Pac-Man games. I'm not sure how this uh, fares for it, but that collection also does not include Pac-Man 2, which is functionally a really terrible game, but 
It also contains Pac-Man 1, so... Somewhere along the way, it balances out, but I think functionally it's kind of like, it, it's kind of like um, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3. Where it was a Rogue Squadron game, which is usually what you associate with flying around in a spaceship, except it didn't involve floating around in a spaceship, it was mostly running around shooting things in third person, and it was terrible. But it had the entire Rogue Squadron 2 as a playable mode in it. Unfortunately, you need a second player to do it, but you can do it. I'm not really sure how I should feel about that, because it's like, the game itself is terrible, but part of that game is an actually really good game. <laughs> It also had the uh, classic uh, trilogy of Star Wars arcade games, the uh, wireframe ones, which were really cool. Although it did not have the Star Wars trilogy arcade game, which was a rail shooter, which I, I've played once. That, that game is really cool. In fact, it had like a rail shooter first person lightsaber duel with, light, or, uh, with Darth Vader, which was really cool. But as good as Rogue Squadron. 2 was... Rogue Squadron 1 was way better, I think. I Just had more variety to the levels. Plus, it had the V-Wing, which I really like. Although, none of them top, uh... This reminds me of the second level to Mario 64, and I still remember where the secret is in this level. But, uh... This kind of reminds me of Swamp's Fortress, where you have to climb the tower in Mario 2. I'm just gonna grab the... That and I believe there's a bomb here as well. I think. Pretty sure. Pretty pretty sure. I guess not. But yeah, there's tons of nice little hidden things, which makes really if you want to get all the points and actually get the hidden levels really tough. But I did it at one point, and I don't want to do it again if I can help it. Which is why I'm just gonna cheese my way to the secret world. I'm not afraid to do that. Oh, that was close. Uh, but, uh, yeah, as good as the Rogue Squadron games were, not as good as TIE Fighter, which I still say is the best Star Wars game. And it's nice that uh, good old games finally decided to stock it. Oh, that was something I actually bought. Uh, it wasn't on a Christmas sale, but it was on a good old games sale. Uh, Shogo Mobile Armor Division. Which is a first-person shooter, but it has, like, two forms. Like, it has the first-person shooter on foot form, and then it has a first-person shooter mech form. And the mechs are really, like, responsive and nice. Almost makes me think of, uh, controlling, like, a Gundam from, like, Gundam Wing in that it's, like, super fast responsive. Oh, that reminds me, I was also watching some Beasties recently, which... It's also called Beast Wars if your country is dumb. Because you can't have war in the title of a show. Or at least a children's show out here. I guess that that's a rule. In fact, I'm pretty sure that rule was... Oh. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I'm not going back and getting the bomb again. I'm just going to run to the end. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that law was actually created about a week after uh, Beasties, Beast Wars came out. Because... Out here, uh, when it first aired, I remember watching the first episodes. Um, it was called Beast Wars out here for the first couple weeks. Ironically, the same company made another really great uh, CGI show, as well as Reboot, which was another fantastic one, but it had the same problem in that it had war in the title so that they couldn't... so they had to automatically change it. And uh, that show was called... Uh, up here it was called Shadow Raiders, which I think was an infinitely better name, but I think that the um, American title, which had to be censored to get rid of war, was... That's a dick move. Put the, uh, put the uh, key on the opposite end of the door, because most people will skip it. These guys look like they're dancing. We're not going to watch them dance, though. But, uh, yeah, it was called War Planets. Whereas in North America or uh, in Canada, it was called uh, Shadow Raiders. I think Shadow Raiders is the best, is a uh, better name, but I think War Planets. It, it's more telling of what the show is about. And I would love to get like a DVD set of uh, Shadow Raiders or War Planets or whatever. Yep. Now, now we're really into Mario 64 territory, climbing a clock tower. 
But you can't uh, jump in at a precise moment and just cause everything to stop moving. That'd be too easy. But uh, Shadow Raiders was good. Watching some uh, beasties, as I said. Good old Scott McNeil voicing half the cast, including my favorite Transformer, good old Dinobot. The Bushido Samurai Velociraptor. I used to have a Dinobot action figure. It was one of two Transformer action figures I ever owned. I had the um, I had the original print Dinobot, which someone stole. In fact, someone stole my other one too. Everything I love gets stolen from me. I wish I had them so I could like put them on my monitor or something just to give my monitor some personality. But I had uh, the original print Dinobot, which was pink for some reason. And I had the Generation 2 Optimus Prime, which was made out of metal, and like, uh, its windows were real glass, and it came with like, this uh, big black trailer that just had Optimus and Chrome letters on the side, and that was so cool. And uh, speaking of things that I had that someone stole from me, I, I was thinking about this recently. Uh, I was thinking about, uh, when I was a kid, I used to go to McDonald's all the time, for the toys, of course, because they try to market to kids like that. That, that food makes me throw up. In fact, the smell alone makes me vomit, but I can't eat there anymore. Um, but I remember having two toys that I absolutely loved. And one of them was like this Micro Machines sort of uh, submarine thing. It was blue and it had like this big rubber hook on the top. I thought that thing was so cool. And the other was something... And both of these things, I've been trying to figure out what they were called, see if I could get them off eBay real cheap or something, just to satisfy my childhood nostalgia, of course. But another thing was something I actually actively put in work for, kind of. And that was, uh, some point during the early aughts, there was this, um, I think it was a sort of Arthurian cartoon, like a... Avalon, Excalibur, Arthurian cartoon, and uh, McDonald's had, of course, a promotional toy thing, and you could get the heroes or the villains, but the neat thing was if you got the villains, you got the little villain uh, toys, which sucked, but each of the villain toys came with, like, a uh, little rainbow-colored piece of armor. Like, uh, it was a single solid color of clear path plastic, and it was like an armor piece you could put over top of them. But the neat thing was, if, if you had the full set of uh, villains, you could take the armor off them and combine them into this big rainbow dragon. And I actually had to work to get that. Like, I had... Uh, the first one I got was the uh, sorceress lady who came with a big red dragon head. And I got uh, the feet for the big guy and, like, the body piece and the claws. And then I got a second set of feet and they discontinued the... Uh, the promotion. So I was missing one piece, the big blue um, wings, and they were kind of the thing that held the entire dragon together. And I knew a guy in uh, my class at the time who was prone to saying he had things, like just to seem popular and cool, and basically he, he lied a lot, like he was a good guy, but I think he was just a compulsive liar who was just trying to impress people. He told me he had this and I didn't believe him, so... He had me come to school one day, back in the day, with uh, my spare guy with the feet. And he brought his sister because I guess he didn't want to get scammed, and he uh, gave it to me, and I completed my dragon, and it was... That was a cool little thing that I earned. And someone stole it, and I'm sad. And long story short is, if anyone knows what the name of that uh, little blue submarine and rainbow dragon were, let me know, because... I imagine I could probably find them on eBay super cheap if I knew what they were called. I've, I've done generic searches, but that was some excellent timing by PyBot, by the way. But, uh... Now we go to the Katina Star. Which... Which has some really cool levels in it, I think. But, uh, that was Bomber Week, Day 2. Planet 2, Planet Primus, got an even lower score than yesterday, <laughs> but uh, I hope to see you tomorrow to continue this quest to finish with the lowest score possible and still see the bonus levels. <laughs> I'll see you then.